you purchase SBI valve train components, that blue and yellow box represents 40 years of industry knowledge, R&D, quality that exceeds OEM standards, and outstanding customer service, as well as a dedicated team, ready to help no matter your application needs. That's how SBI keeps engines humming. Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about lifter preload. It's very important and we don't have an issue because we talk about lifter preload all the time. But I hear and we see all the time that customers come in with a cylinder head that they've gotten done somewhere else and either on the phone or they come in and right off the bat, I can pretty much uh, figure out what it is. First thing I ask is who bled the lifters? And when you have this a puppy dog look on their face, that they don't understand what I'm talking about and I don't make fun of them and we're not going to do that here. But bleeding the lifters, what does that mean? That's the most common problem. They pull off the camshaft, they pull off the rockers, they take the cylinder head to a shop, they do a valve job on it and no one ever um, explained to them. And I kind of see it but I don't see it because to me if we don't educate the, the customer while he's here, I can just see the future and I can't see the future but I know what's going to happen. They're going to put this back on, they're going to assemble it all and they're going to bend valves or if it's a non-interference engine they're not going to have any compression. And the very first thing I get a phone call, boom I don't have any compression, the other shop did something wrong. What the other shop did wrong is not explaining to you what you needed to do. So they weren't looking out for you. That's what the other shop did wrong, not necessarily um, machining wrong. And this is what I'm talking about. A lifter has preload. This is hydraulic and if I need to do a video just on a lifter preload, I will do that. But for right now, we're just talking about the common mistake that everything, beep, we're just talking about the common mistake that I see all the time. So, it's self-adjusting. What that means is on this particular application, we have a rocker on the top and it's a cam follower and we have an overhead cam. It can be with the rocker arm and a push rod, the same thing. This didn't used to happen back in the day and a lot of times the old timers are the ones that don't understand it and let's just get right down to it. What happens it's self-adjusting so when the oil pressure comes inside the lifter oil pressure comes in and lifts up I'm going to call it a plunger but it's this little top part of the lifter that adjusts all of the clearance out of the way. There's a little check valve in here. As the cam rotates you cannot compress the liquid so the valve opens and the valve closes. If there's any play in there, the oil pressure will always push that little plunger up. That's what it's supposed to do. Self-adjusting. You don't have to do any adjustment. The actual adjustment is done at the machine shop when they do, when they set the, the valves, when they do a valve job, and they set the heights, they have to set that height to put the plunger right in the middle of its window. That's lifter preload. Like I said, leave me a like and a comment. Go ahead and take the time now and subscribe. Hit the notifications and you know when I'm coming on live. All that being said, let's get back to what I was saying. So, what happens is as soon as you unbolt the cam to get to the head bolts, to get this off, this goes over to a table. You get all of the rockers and everything goes over to the table. The shop does a va job. You get it back. It's self-adjusting. You don't do anything besides bolt this on and it adjusts. Well, here's what happened. You see how the cam cannot even go back down anymore? As soon as we lifted this up, the lifters pumped up. There's a little check valve in there. It pushed the little plunger up. Oil got underneath it because it's full of oil. Now when you go to put this back down, it's going to hold the valve open further than it would have when it's in operation. Because it's pumped up now. There's oil inside of it. Back in the day, valve springs were a lot more spring pressure. They had over 100 pounds of spring pressure. You had a Chevy V8. We, we had these problems even then, but not as common. As soon as you pull the rockers off, pull the heads off, put them back on, put all the rockers on, adjusted your valves, or just bolted down like a Ford, the spring pressure would bleed the lifters for you. So occasionally you'd have to, if you had real thick oil, turn the engine over a quarter turn, let the valves open, and you'll see that the spring pressure is bleeding the oil out of the lifters. And for the most part, it always happened, it always worked, and you never had a problem. Occasionally, some of the old timers will understand what I'm talking about. You'll put it on, you go to start it, it'll run really rough, popping through the carburetor, out the exhaust, and then real quickly, it adjusts itself out. 
there was enough spring pressure to push the bleeder down in the check valve. Fast forward to today's world, it ain't happening. The springs are a lot softer. It's a beehive spring. This has a beehive spring. If you need to understand what a beehive spring is, you know the drill. Leave me a comment. I might make a video. What a beehive spring is, a, it's a progressive spring rate. So it doesn't have as much seat pressure. We're trying to save camshafts. It's a, totally, it's a totally different subject, but we're still talking about the camshaft. There's more on cams that we can talk all day long just on camshafts. So you unbolt this. They pump up like they're supposed to do to be self-adjusting. Now you put this back on and you put the caps on. And what happens, it holds the valves open. The springs aren't going to bleed the oil out of there. It just ain't going to happen. So as soon as you go to start it, if you don't bend the valves because they're now held open a lot further than they're supposed to be open, then you, it may not even start. It's popping through the car, popping through the car, popping out the exhaust. You're getting all kinds of check engine lights on. Your wife's looking at you like, what's going on? Maybe it's your husband. That's the problem. You call the shop. The heads are coming back off. You call another shop. They don't know what they're doing. We're fast forward to full circle. Here we are. So what do we need to do? We need to bleed all the oil out of the lifter. And I take that back. We don't need to bleed all the oil out of the lifter. We don't need to get too medieval with it. We just need to bleed enough oil out of the lifter till the little plunger inside moves. Right now, you can't move the plunger. It's now a solid lifter, essentially. It's hydraulic, but there's so much oil in here, you're not going to compress that oil out of there. So it's now turned into a solid. You put it on there, it holds the valves open. We need to do is squeeze the plunger down. There's a little hole right in the side of there. Be real gentle with it. We're going to bleed the oil out of it until the plunger is soft. Once the plunger is soft and moves around, we can put all this on, tighten everything down. As soon as we start it, oil pressure is going to get in here and self-adjust the way it should be. So let's get out to the shop and I'm going to show you how to bleed the lifters so that you can speed this process up get it done and have compression on your engine. Engine Quest, your home for new OE type replacement and performance engine parts and cores. For our full line of products, visit enginequest.com or call 1-800-426-8771. Engine Quest, the name you trust for engine parts, cores, and recycling. All right, here we're at the vise and we're gonna bleed the oil out of it. Oil is gonna come out of there, so we wanna make sure that we use a rag. What we don't wanna do is, see the end of the lifter has a hole in it? And if you put it in here with the rag, you need to make sure, that some of them don't, some of them do, make sure that you don't do that and shove a rag in there. So if you do have the ones that have a hole at the end, and you can use this procedure for all hydraulic lifters. Sometimes you may need to use a bolt on, on a lifter, on a lifter bucket. We use a bolt in here to, to go into the bucket to bleed the oil out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's clean. And I'm gonna use this side against there so it doesn't shove a rag into it. Also, the little hole on the side of it, I'm gonna aim it down. Hopefully, which is close enough that you can see what I'm doing. And don't go all the way down till it bo bottoms out. You don't wanna bottom out a lifter. You don't want to let it go all the way down and you're shoving it to the bottom. I'm just pushing it in. It may take two or three times. That's actually pretty good. Now look, look at that. And then as soon as I moved it a couple of times, it actually started to st stiffen up because the oil got underneath it. But we're done. It's enough. It doesn't ta it take a lot. It moves. Here, I can just slightly put pressure on it. Go slow. You can do it more than once if you need to. Now I can feel that it don't have any pressure on it. All oh, excellent. Look what's come out of it. It actually, not a bad idea to get the oil out, oil out of it. So now you get nice fresh oil. See what's coming out of it? Now when you start it, fresh oil is going to go in the lifter. And you got rid of some of this dirty oil. It's like bleeding brakes. You're going to bleed the oil out of it. And our fresh oil will get in there. When you first start the vehicle, you'll hear the rockers clatter for about not even 15 seconds. It's going to go click, click, click. And then it's going to self-adjust. And it's like putting a brand new set of lifters in. Oil is dripping out of them. I can look at that. See what's coming out of it? All the dirty oil is coming out. Not a bad deal. We'll get nice fresh oil. We'll go into it, look at that. And that's what I'm talking about. 
all that oil. So I'm getting all that oil out of it. That's why I put the little oil hole aiming down. And look how much oil came out of those. So there you go. Nice and spongy. I'm loving it. Look at that. Look at, look at the oil that's coming out of that dude. So aim the oil hole down. Yep. Perfect. There we go. This is also a service that you can add to your shop. And it's real simple. Easy way to make money. Don't over press it. Just go slowly. Let it put itself out. And look at the oil that's coming out of it. So we're getting rid of the oil, especially if you have a blown head gasket and you got a milkshake and you got a lot of dirty oil and stuff. Go ahead and get that out of there. Look at that. So it's real simple, but this is going to save everybody a lot of trouble. Especially who's ever installing this. G garages should do this themselves, but they don't. Yeah. Okay, so we bled the lifters. It's that easy. Put them in a vise, squeeze them. Little tips, put the oil hole aiming down when you squeeze. Don't over squeeze. You'll, there's no need to get the plunger all the way down to the bottom and having a jam at the bottom. So just squeeze it slightly, let it go up, squeeze it slightly a few times until the top is soft. You see how that moves? Now they're self-adjusting. All right, I got all the lifters in place. I put some lube on them. I'm using a Clevite bearing guard for the cam journals. You know me, I like Joe Gibbs and I like Amzol. This isn't a video on what's the best lube. Because I can talk all, all day long. And I like to put all of my rockers, it's easy enough, after it comes out of the spray washes, to just number them with a marker. Um, make things easy i always engrave and number makes things much easier we want to put our cam in place in the engines that have the head bolts underneath the cam then we'll just put the cams on and leave the cam loose because the customer is going to have to pull the cam off and the rockers to torque his head in this particular head you can get to the cam bolts um but you can also see now that this can be tightened up all the way and it's not opening any valves. Why? Because we bled the oil out of the lifters. When before, I, I showed you on, on the table, when just putting the cam in there, you can't put the cam back down. So when you torque it, the cam caps, the valves are going to open. Now I can put the cam all the way down and we don't have any issue with opening any valves. So that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and put some lube under here as well on the top they they don't take any cam bearings these are marked one two three and four aiming to the front we're getting a little sidetracked but arrows to the front bolts in we'll put a little oil on the bolts we'll torque them down all right let's get up to the front we'll finish up this video and we'll see you up front all right we're back so now you know how to bleed lifters it's not that difficult. Don't get medieval with them. Don't try to push the plunger all the way down to the bottom. We want to just lightly squeeze it in a vise. I've showed you how to do that now. Get some of the oil out of it until the top is soft and you've, you've bled the oil out of it. Now when you bolt it on, it's self-adjusting. You're going to have compression. You're going to be happy. Um, you're putting the valve covers back on and you're done and you don't have to go back in there and pull the heads off. Go back to the shop and tell them they did something wrong.